Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you how easy it is to import Logic Pro project settings and data from one Logic Pro project to another without having to bounce between these different projects, you know, opening one, exporting, closing it, going to the other one, opening, importing, so on and so forth. Instead, you can just open the project browser in Logic Pro in one project, navigate like you would in the Mac Finder to the other project, double click on it, and then import everything from audio regions, mini regions, any type of region, plugins, plugin settings, automation, the tempo track lane, like anything you can think of that you want to import from one project to another, you can do that with this feature. And I'm going to show you three circumstances where I had to use this particular function for this album that I've been mixing. So let's dig into it right now. The project on screen is the first song of 13 from an album that I co-wrote and co-produced with my bud. As you can see at the tail end of the project here, I have some sound effects that are going to carry us from the end of this first song directly into the second song of the album. But here's the thing, these sound effects right here, originally the idea was is that these sound effects were part of song two and not part of song one but we've changed that decision and I had to import these sound effects from song two's project into song one's project. In fact, let me give you a sense of what's going on contextually. I'll play you the end of the song. Most of the song is pretty low key and just kind of plodding along, but then we have these big massive moments that lead into some sound effects and the idea of walking and walking up to a house and opening the door. So I'll play you maybe right around here. Here we go. They got that never go out along to it. I am being no sleep till it's just our bones wearing grins. No, that white lace over the phone say yeah, we almost home and the three steps ain't shh, but the porch that's where we let go. And then Hello. Okay, so that's a quick preview of the song. Mainly we're concerned with the fact that these sound effects were not originally in this project. And thus we got to go to Logic's browser to navigate to Song 2's project to import these sound effects. To do that, we're going to go right up here to the upper right hand corner and click on the browser button right here. Or of course, you could press F on your Mac's keyboard to open and close this browser. Now, lucky for me, we're actually right at the location of the Song 2 project, but let's assume we're not there. Maybe instead you're seeing the project tab, which shows you all of the audio and regions related to this project that we're looking at. So to navigate to the Song 2 project, we would click on the All Files tab. And then right here, we have four buttons for navigating around our Mac starting with the internal hard drive and any connected hard drives to this Mac, the user folder, the current project folder, and then if you've created any untagged Apple loops, there will be a button for that in the All Files tab. So let's go to my user folder, and we'll go in this case to the desktop, and right under my work in progress, I have the album that I'm mixing. And just like with the Mac Finder, you can double click on folders to dig deeper into your system. In fact, there's even a column view if you prefer that type of navigation. So I'm going to the second song here. And then we see the project file. Because I structure my projects as folders and not packages, we see not only the folder with the project file, but all the individual folders for the alchemy samples, audio files, bounces, and so on. But of course, if you save your projects as packages, you'll see a file that looks like this. Cool, so I found the second song project file. From here, I need to grab the sound effects from song two to import into song one. To do that, I'm going to double click on the project file. And because I've saved project alternatives at various stages for this album, I'm going to open one of these project alternatives, most likely the most recent one. But that might not always be the case as I'll show you in my next example. All right, so the most recent project alternative for song two, 
Let's click OK. Now at the top, we see navigation through various folders to get to song two. And then we see specific details about the project, like sample rate, the beats per minute of the project, time signature, and scale. And right underneath, we have tabs to reveal or hide aspects like the global track lanes, audio, instrument, auxiliary channel strips, I.O., and even MIDI. And we can navigate all around this obviously really restricted view. If we expand the view a bit, we can see a bit more. So cool, we can see the number of the track, the name, the type, content, cells, plugins. We can even scale each of these columns as needed. We can see sends, IO. Cool, so everything you might need from one project to import to another, it's right here. Close to the top, we can see a track stack called intro, which includes our wind effect, a coffee machine recording. I recorded my coffee machine with my iPhone and then I threw a reverb on it to make it sound all spooky. An iPhone recording of walking in a park and further iPhone recordings for footsteps, a door slam, and that breath. Take note that the number one is not in parentheses, but all the numbers below from tracks two to nine are in parentheses. This notes that these are contained within the track stack called intro. So in this case, I want to select the summing track stack, hold shift, and then click on the last track in the track stack called Alex Reverb BIP for bounce in place. All right, so we've selected all the tracks that we need to import. I want to make sure to include the content of each track. This will include the actual regions that live on those tracks. Additionally, I want to include any and all plugins to make sure that these tracks are routed to the summing track stack that they live in. Let's include the input and output arrangement. And just to be safe, I'm going to include automation. I don't really remember if there is automation, but let's include it. And right at the bottom here, we have two buttons. In this case, I don't have the option to replace, but I have the option to add these tracks, this content, these plugins, this IO and automation to the project that we have open. So let's do that right now. Okay, so Logic's double checking. This window is asking, hey, we're gonna have to either create some new auxiliary channel strips in this project. We're gonna have to add auxes for reverb, delay, track stacks, any sends, or you can choose an existing aux that already lives in this project, which can save on duplicate auxes being created. But honestly, I don't know if I have a corresponding aux. So let's just add them. So now we can see right here in the track lanes, intro. And if we pop it open, we can see the wind effect with its plugin and it's routed to bus 36, which is the input for the summing track stack. We have our coffee machine with the Valhalla Supermassive Free plugin. My park walking with again, Valhalla Supermassive. The footsteps, door slam, down to the breath here. So if we solo the summing stack, unmute these tracks, let's just use control and M to unmute them. Power up and let's take a listen. And I bet that hello is right around here. Hello. Cool, so we have just about everything there. Everything that was included in the previous project. Obviously I've updated the timing and effects since importing, but now we can bring all this stuff down to the end of song one. Cause remember this was originally going to be the beginning of song two and I can make those adjustments. And Everything I need from the track stack to the individual tracks, the regions, the plugins, the routing. If we take a look for any automation. So no automation in this case, but now I can just keep rolling. And I didn't have to go to song two and export and then import into song one and save patches and all this stuff. No, I can just keep rolling. That's how awesome this feature is. In the second example, I want to show you how you can import project data and settings from the same project 
but from a separate project alternative using the same steps that I outlined in the first example. For this song, I had a preset that I was using from Alterbeat. Take note that the title of this project has a date, and obviously this project was started several years ago, and it's gone through many different iterations over time. It started as one particular sound and has transformed into a complete other. And in that time frame, Drum Machine Designer had been updated, all these kits had been added, but when we first conceptualized the song, we used Ultra Beat for the drum sounds. So I'm just going to solo this track lane using Control and S. And let's take a quick listen to what it sounds like. Right, so that's how this particular preset sounds. I've since saved it as a setting because while I was mixing this song, something happened. I don't know. I, I pressed a key command or an undo or, or I did something. And the sound of my kit went from sounding like that to sounding completely different. It actually completely transformed. And I didn't have this option to go back or compare or undo. It just, that just became the sound of the kit out of nowhere. I cannot explain to you what happened. Okay, so let's say that. We'll close the plugin window. We'll do some other stuff. I'll just pop this open and let's see if we can return to Ultra Beat. Okay, so I still have the options, but just pretend in your mind I didn't have these options. This was the sound of the kit and I couldn't go back to my original sound. So what do I do in that case? I went through every single preset in Ultra Beat and none of them sounded the same. So I have no idea where I even pulled that kit from. But then it dawned on me. What if I go to a previous project alternative and import the original Ultra Beat setting? Well, that's simple enough. I'm going to press F on my Max keyboard. And thankfully, the project that we have open is in focus in the project browser here. But again, if you don't see it, if you see the project tab, just click on the All Files tab. And then navigate either by hard drive or your user folder. So once again, desktop, work in progress, the album, this project's folder, and then I'll double click on the project file itself. All right, so now once again, we have the option to choose between different project alternatives. All right, so I'm going to choose from an earlier project alternative and click OK. And I see here, OG drums. So let's give that a shot. I'll select import the content. Actually, normally I would select import content, but I don't really care about the MIDI regions themselves. I only care about the plugin and the setting for Ultra Beat. So let's import that by adding. I could replace this Ultra Beat kit by clicking replace, and it will replace this instance of Ultra Beat and the plugins, but I just don't know if it's the one I'm looking for. So instead, let's click add. All right, so we have the OG drums. Let's hold option, click, hold, and drag to copy these regions. Let's solo and take a listen. Beautiful, there are my drums and I can get back to working on this song. In this final example, I wanna show you how I use the import project data and settings function to create a separate compact project file to send to a collaborator who is recording string parts in his home studio in a completely separate state. So in this case, I didn't wanna send the original project to my collaborator because you know, it's many years in the making. We test drove a lot of different ideas and arrangements and recorded a lot of audio. So that original project is probably full of bloat that this collaborator just doesn't need to have in his possession to be able to play his string parts. In that case, I saved a separate empty project and imported a stereo bounce of that song. This stereo bounce includes everything that he needs except for the string parts, which I wanna import into this project. Once again, to do that, let's press F on the Mac keyboard or click on the button in the upper right-hand corner Click on the All Files tab, and I'm going to navigate to this separate external hard drive that I have connected. Go to the current folder, album folder, 
LP2. And here's the project folder for that song. And once again, double click on the project file. I'll select the most recent project alternative, click OK. And now I need to navigate to the strings that I think are pretty close to the bottom of this project. Cool, so we're starting from right here. And by holding Shift, I can select multiple tracks in a row or hold Command and continue clicking individually. All right, so I wanna make sure to include the content of these performances, as well as the plugins, assuming he has the plugins, the IO, and perhaps automation, though I don't think there is any. But one other detail that I wanna include is probably gonna be pretty helpful, is I wanna make sure to include the tempo track as well as the marker track. This way, he has the correct tempo to play along to if he decides to use the metronome and markers so he knows where he is in the song. And once again, let's click Add. All right, again, Logic wants to know, by selecting Add, you can create a new auxiliary channel strip for this particular you know, option, or you can choose an existing aux that already exists in the project. I don't have any auxes because it's a brand new project. So I'll just click OK to add. And Logic will continue to ask this question for every aux that's going to be imported. And I'm just going to click Add All. Right, so let's close the project browser. We're going to press F. We have our markers for each section of the song. We open the tempo track lane. Look at that, the tempo updated from 120 to 145. And here are the string parts that we laid out. So if we unmute, take a listen to just the strings. Actually, let's take a listen to everything. The final violin's best. Okay, so they're okay at best. I can tell you that this collaborator made it sound a thousand times better because he's amazing. So there you go. Three different ways that the project import data and settings function in Logic Pro help me just move stuff from one project to another and allow me just keep going, just keep being creative, keep mixing, just not causing me to get hung up on the process of how do I get stuff from one project into another. I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you next week here on Wide Logic Pro Rules. Take care.